talk about two more methods of apportionment, Webster's method and the Huntington Hill method. So historical solution number four. We've had three solutions so far, Hamilton, uh, Jefferson's, and Adams' methods. And now we're going to talk about Webster's method, which is very similar to Jefferson's and Adams in that it's a modified divisor method. Okay, instead of using the standard divisor, we change the divisor. The only thing that differs between Jefferson's and Adams is that Jefferson's always rounded down, right? Adams always rounded up. Webster's rounds the way we typically round, right? 0.5 and up, round up, below 0.5, round down. So the rounding in Webster's is our standard conventional rounding method. <clears throat> so again, step one is the hardest, where you have to decide, find a suitable divisor so that you won't have any leftovers after we've rounded. And we follow the same flowchart that we used for Jefferson's and Adams methods. Use D to find the quotas. Usually you start with the standard divisor and get the standard quotas. Round all of those quotas conventionally, right? So this step is what differs in the three methods, Jefferson's, Adams, and Webster's. Jefferson's would say round these all down. Adams would say round these all up. Webster's says round all these conventionally. Add up the rounded quotas and call it T. If T equals the number, exactly the number of seats in Congress, we're done. And if it doesn't, if it's too small, we need to make it bigger, so we should make D smaller. And if T is too big, we need to make it smaller, so we make our divisor a little bit bigger. So let's use Webster's method to apportion the Congress of Parador. Remember, um, we're giving out 250 seats here. This is the same example we've been working with for several classes. So I have uh, six states, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and all their populations are here for a total of 12,500,000. So I got the standard divisor. Remember, you get that by doing your total population divided by your total seats, 12.5 million divided by 250, gives me the standard divisor of 50,000. Then you take each state's population and divide by 50,000, and we get the standard quotas. Okay. When you add those up, you should get exactly 250. My next step should be to round conventionally. Okay. So my rounded quota, point, point 0.5 and up, round up, below point 0.5, round down. So this would be 33, 139, 3, 42, 14, 20. So what's that add up to? <coughs> 251 which is too big, right? So how do I change my divisor D when my total is too big? If I need to make it smaller, I should make D bigger. You got it. Make D bigger. Right, so if I, if I want all my quotas to be a little bit smaller, then I need to take the divisor that I'm dividing by and make it a little bit bigger. So my, st my divisor I just used was 50,000. I need to choose a bigger, a slightly bigger divisor. What do you think we should choose? 50,250? What exactly made you choose that? Yeah, we're only off by one. So I need to make D a little bit bigger and... Um, Probably not too much bigger, because I don't want to have my changes be too drastic. <coughs> okay, so I'm just going to take each population now and divide by my new modified divisor. All right, so I get 
13.63 and 19.66. Okay, so adding these all up won't give me any interesting information, so I'm just put an X in that box. Um, my next step should be to round these. Okay, so I round these all conventionally, and I get 33, 138, 3, 42, 14, 20. And when I add up that row, I get 250, and I'm done. So that was a good first guess for our modified divisor, so we don't have to keep searching. So that's called Webster's method. <clears throat> so we've studied the um, several historical solutions to the problem of American apportionment um, to apportion the seats in the House of Representatives. Today we're going to conclude with a look at how we do it now. Okay, so this is the current method of apportionment called Huntington Hill. So in 1929, Congress was fed up with the controversies surrounding apportionment. We were constantly changing our method of apportionment because states were getting mad about losing seats, another state gaining a seat. Okay, so they asked a panel of mathematicians to recommend a correct formula. They said, how should we do this? And the method suggested by the mathematicians goes by the name Huntington Hill after its two inventors. Congress didn't accept the recommendation until 1941, but when it did, it made Huntington Hill the permanent apportionment method, um, so it couldn't be changed. It made the method self-executing, which means that um, the seats are reapportioned every census without congressional approval. So that just happens, and the Congress can't um, make a stink, right? They can't stop it if they don't like the results. Um, and it permanently fixed the number of representatives at 435. So Huntington Hill method has stood the test of time so far. It's constantly being challenged by states that lose a seat under the method, but um, it's gone to many federal courts, including the Supreme Court, and it has been upheld so far. <coughs> okay, so to learn this method, we have to take a small mathematical detour. So the standard way of averaging two numbers is to take, find the number halfway between them, which would mean add them up and divide by two, right? That's a standard average. Um, it's called, um, you know, our fancy mathematical term for it is the arithmetic mean, when you add two numbers and divide by two. So there are other kinds of means as well, like the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, and the quadratic mean. Um, Le those are less well-known means. The Huntington Hill method happens to employ something called the geometric mean. Okay, so here's what the geometric mean is. The geometric mean of two positive numbers, A and B, you find by multiplying those two numbers and then taking the square root. Okay, instead of adding and then dividing by two, we multiply and take the square root. So for comparison purposes, the arithmetic mean of two numbers is the A plus B all over two. Add them and divide by two. All right, so we're going to find the geometric mean, and let's do the arithmetic mean too, just for a little review. Between two and eight. So the arithmetic mean between two and eight, you just add them up and divide by two, right? So we would have two plus eight over two, and what does that equal? Five. Good. So our arithmetic mean is five. Our geometric mean, you multiply them and then square root. So I would have two times eight, square root that, 
yeah, 2 times 8 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. <coughs> All right, how about um, 11 and 4? So my arithmetic mean, my typical mean, would be 11 plus 4 over 2, which is 7.5. And then my geometric mean, multiply them 11 times 4 and square root it, square root of 44, thank you, is approximately 6.63. So both um, means give you a number that's somewhere between the two numbers that we were taking the mean of. Um, it's just different different ways of measuring the middle, right? <clears throat> so that's the geometric mean. So the point of our, this little excursion is so we can learn the Huntington Hill method of apportionment. So I'm going to start off by telling you that the Huntington Hill method works very much like Webster's and Adams and Jefferson's methods. It's a modified divisor method. But the rounding is a little bit different. And it's different than any kind of rounding you've ever seen before. Okay, so rounding down, in, as in Jefferson's, not so weird, right? Rounding up in Adams, not so weird. Rounding normal in Webster's, like the least weird of all. This one is the most weird, okay? So the Huntington Hill rounding rule. It says, if your modified quota is below the geometric mean of the lower quota and the upper quota, round down. And if it is above the geometric mean of the lower quota and the upper quota, round up. So for example, if we think if we do an example, it'll be clearer. Let's say a state's modified quota is 32.68. So that means its lower quota is 32 and its upper quota is 33. Right? The round down is 32, round up is 33. We take the geometric mean of 32 and 33, the lower and the upper quota, so the geometric mean is when you multiply them and take the square root. So I'm going to find the geometric mean between 32 and 33. So I do the square root of 32 times 33, and I get 32.496. Okay. So 32.68, the modified quota. Right? Is that less than or greater than the 32.496? Yes, it's greater, which means we round up. So think of the geometric mean as the cutoff point. Below it, you round down, and above it, you round up. So our cutoff point in Webster's method was always 0.5. Right? So here, the cutoff point is going to be kind of shifting a little bit. Right, our cutoff point is the geometric mean between the lower and upper quota. And 32.496 is really close to 32.5. So it's just a slight adjustment off of Webster's method, where you change the cutoff from 32.5 to 32.496. So for a second example, a state's modified quota is 14.49. Let's round this according to Huntington Hill. So first I have to find the cutoff, right, which is the geometric mean of the lower quota and the upper quota. So what's my lower quota? 14, upper quota is 15. So my geometric mean is going to be the square root of 14 times 15. 14.491. So 14.49, is that less than or bigger than 14.491? Less than. So that means that I round down. It's below my cutoff. So this is what we call the cutoff, right? 14.49 is less than 14.491, barely, right? So I'm going to round down to 14. <clears throat> so
So again, 14.491 is my cutoff. That's a close to 14.5, which is your typical cutoff, like in Webster's method. So it's very similar to Webster's. It's just that you have to calculate where that cutoff is instead of just always using 0.5. Okay, so to summarize the whole method, it's just like Jefferson's or Adams or Webster's, except now we round according to the Huntington Hill rule. Okay, so you find a suitable divisor D. Using D as the divisor, compute each state's modified quota, and then apportion according to the Huntington Hill rounding rule. And you use the same flowchart that we've been using to help us find D. Use D to find the quotas, and we usually start by using the standard divisor and getting the standard quotas. Then um, this is wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, we should not round up. Round according to Huntington Hill. And then we're going to say add the rounded quotas and call the sum t. I must have copied and pasted this one from Adam's method and then forgot to adjust it. So we want to round according to the Huntington Hill rounding method, add those rounded quotas, call the sum t. If t is already equal to the number of seats in Congress, you're done. And if it's not, we say, well, if it's too small and I want to make it bigger, then I should make D, the divisor, smaller. And if T is too big, that means I want to make it smaller, so I should make the number I'm devising by, dividing by bigger. <coughs> okay, so let's do an example. We have a small country of five states, A, B, C, D, and E. There are going to be 40 states 40 seats in the legislature, and I want to apportion them using Huntington Hill. Okay, so first thing I need to calculate is my standard divisor. How do I get it? Total population divided by seats. Okay, so I get my total population by adding the population of each state. Oops. 400,000. Okay, thanks. Okay, so then I'm going to do 400,000 divided by 40, and I shouldn't need a calculator. What is that? 10,000. So my standard divisor is 10,000. Okay, so I'm going to get my standard quotas. that I'm going to get by using a standard divisor of 10,000. So we get them by taking each state's population and dividing by 10,000. So 34,800 divided by 10,000 would be 3.48. 104,800 divided by 10,000 would be 10.48. And then this one would be um, 6.48. 1.408. Nope. 14.08. Fourteen point oh eight, and then 5.48. And when I add up those standard quotas, what am I supposed to get here? 40. Good. So you should add them just to check that you did everything right. You should get 40. Okay. Now, 
in every divisor method I have, at this point I round, right? I'm going to take each of those numbers and round them <coughs> down if I was using Jefferson's, up if I was using Adams, standard if I was using Webster's, but I'm using Huntington Hill, right? So my rounding rule takes a little bit of work, so I'm going to put in several columns to make that work um, more systematic. So I'm going to add lower quota, upper quota, and geometric mean. Okay, so lower quota is just take all of these numbers and chop off the decimal. 3, 10, 6, 14, and 5. Upper quota is take each of your standard quotas and bump them up one. So I'm going to have 4, 11, 7, 15, and 6. And then I want to take the geometric mean of the lower and the upper quota, which would be multiply them together and square root. Okay, so let's see, the square root, 3 times 4, 3.46. And then the square root of 10 times 11, 10.488. And the square root of 6 times 7, 6.4807. And I'm keeping a few more decimals than I have in my standard quota because I need to be able to compare the size of the standard quota to the size of the geometric mean. So in this one, if I had just written 6.48 and stopped, I wouldn't be able to tell which one was bigger. Right, the square root of 14 times 15, 14.49. And then the square root of 5 times 6 is 5.477. All right, so these geometric means, these are my cutoff points. Right? These are my cutoffs for rounding. It's like the 0.5 in Webster's method. Instead of using 3.5 as my cutoff, above it round up, below it round down, now I'm using 3.464, above it round up, below it round down. So look at your standard quota and compare it to the cutoff. I should write cutoff here. Okay, so look at the standard quota compared to the cutoff. 3.48 to com compared to 3.464. Is it above or below the cutoff? Above. 3.48 is bigger than 3.464, so my Huntington Hill round, according to Huntington Hill rounding, I'm going to round up. Because my standard quota is above the cutoff, I round up to 4. All right, 10.48 compared to 10.488. Yep, 10.48 is lower than this cutoff, so I should round down to 10. 6.48, how does it compare to the cutoff? Lower, so I should round down. And then 14.08, how does that compare to the cutoff of 14.49? It's lower, so I should round down. And then 5.48, how does that compare to my cutoff of 5.477? It's higher, so I round up to 6. <coughs> Add these up. 4 and 10 is 14, and 6 is 20, and 14 is 34, and 6 is 40. So I'm lucky my standard divisor works. I don't have to go through and do another divisor. So this is my final apportionment.
So let's look at these cutoffs before we compare to Webster's method. Just take a look at these cutoffs, 3.464. That's really close to 3.5, right? Yep, 10.488, very close to 10.5. 6.4807, very close to 6.5. 14.49, very close to 14.5. 5.477 is really close to 5.5. So this method is really, really close to Webster's method. We take that 0.5 rounding rule and we just adjust it like a teeny little bit and now we have a brand new method. Yeah. I would have to try a new divisor, right? If this came out too big, I would make my divisor of 10,000 a little bit bigger and I would start all over again. So Huntington Hill is really not very different than Webster's, and it, it rarely gives different results because changing the cutoff by like, you know, a couple, one or two hundredths doesn't often change the results. So this is very, very similar to Webster's method. The results are rarely different, but sometimes they are different. So I, I worked out this example. So I want you to do this same apportionment but use Webster's method and just see how it, how it comes out. And I've, to save you a little time, I told you what divisor works. Use, use a divisor of 9,965. All right, so let's, let's discuss this together. So my standard quotas are what you get when you divide each of your populations by your standard divisor. Okay, so we call this the SQ for standard quota. And the standard quota is specifically used when you're talking about what you get when you divide by the standard divisor. So I divided each of my populations by 10,000. I got 3.48, 10.48, 6.48, 14.08, and 5.48. Those add up to exactly 40. All right, so then I'm going to round each of these according to your standard rounding. Below 0.5, round down. 0.5 and above, round up. So 3.48 should, should go down, right? That's below 3.5. 10.48, that's below 10.5, round down. 6.48, round, round down to 6. 14.08, round down to 14. 5.48, round down to 5. Add those up and you only get 38 seats, right? 38 is too few. So I need my quotas to actually be a little bit bigger. So what should I do to my divisor? make it a little bit smaller. And I told you one that works, 9,965. So then you take each of your populations, divide by 9,965, and what do you get? This was 5.499, right? Yeah. yeah, OK. All right, so when you add, the, add up your modified quotas, quotas that you get when you've changed the divisor, you don't get anything meaningful. So there's no purpose in doing that. Okay. So then we round all of these according to our standard rounding rules, below 0.5 down, 0.5 and up, go up. So this is going to be 3, 11, 7, 14, and 5. <coughs> So it's important not to round your modified quotas, because if I had rounded this to the 10th, I would have written down 5.5, and that would have caused me to round it up. So write down as many decimals as you need to be able to compare it to 0.5, or to be able to compare it to the geometric mean if you're doing Huntington Hill. So then when I, when I add these up, I get exactly 40 seats. So that is my final apportionment using Webster's method. And you can see that in this case, it came out a little bit different than my apportionment using Huntington Hill. Um, but in most cases, it's not going to be different. Okay. So my apportionments were different in this case. But in general, Hamil Huntington Hill and Webster's methods are, more, are most often the same. This was a very carefully constructed example 
where you can see my standard quotas, I constructed them so that they were very close to 0.5. Um, and I did it on purpose so that I might get a different rounding by using 0.5 as the cutoff as opposed to the Huntington Hill geometric mean cutoff. So I just I purposely constructed those populations so that the standard quotas would have um, would be very close to 0.5. But in general, most of the time, Huntington Hill and Webster's give the same results. This was a very carefully constructed example just so that you could see that sometimes they can be different. So in general, given, the, given this, that most of the time they're, they give exactly the same results, what do you think of Huntington Hill in comparison to Webster's? Webster's is way easier. Yeah. By a lot, yeah. So why do you think we do this? Why do we why do we have Huntington Hill if it's almost the same as Webster's? Because it's more complicated. And it's the government, yeah. The government, remember, the government hired a panel of mathematicians to tell them what they should do. And I'm, I don't think that a panel of mathematicians could come back and say, oh, the method you're using is good, right? Like, they couldn't come back and say, Webster's is good. So they made it, made it, made it much, much more complicated, but still almost the same. Right, so that we would have, um, so that they could feel like they were needed. Right. <laughs> okay, so now is um, so a little bit of practice. I want you to take the um, island nation of Margarita and um, a portion. A hundred seats to each of the islands under Huntington Hill and under Webster's. Okay. So here's Peridora's Congress example again. Um, I just have the populations in there and the and the total I got by. So the total I got by adding up the the sum of the f six states, and I got 12,000, 12, 12,500,000. ,000. All right, so the next step for any of the methods is to come up with a standard divisor. And the standard divisor is your total population divided by your total seats. So remember, you press an equal sign to get Excel to do a calculation, and you say, I take my total population, click on the cell that holds that number, and then divided by 250, because we're giving out 250 seats. So there's my standard divisor. All right, so my standard quotas, those are each of the standard divisor, st each of your populations divided by the standard divisor. So I do equals this divided by the standard divisor, but I want this cell to remain static. I always want to use cell B10, not C10, D10, E10, or B11, B12, B13. So I'm going to put some dollar signs around the B. And I get my standard quota. And, yep. And so then those are all my standard quotas. If I add them up, some of the standard quotas, what am I expecting to get? No. 250. 250. Good. So that's just a quick check to see if you've done things correctly so far. All right, and then Jefferson's method rounds everything down. So this is going to be Jefferson's method. So my lower quota is going to be round down. Oops, I could use an equal sign. Equals round down 
click on the cell of with the standard quota in it and then you do comma zero so that's that's the how I get the lower quota and go like that and when I add those all up the sum of all these guys is 246 right it's 246 too big or too small too small I'm trying to get 250 so if 246 is too small what should I do to my divisor make it smaller make it smaller so instead of 50,000 here I'm not even going to use my formula I can just change my divisor to be say something smaller than 50,000 like 49,500 and it changes all of my results automatically except I should just not I should not label this standard quota I should label it modified quota now and this should be my modified lower quota so 49,500 was a good guess because now it adds up to 250 so you can see if it wasn't a good guess if I had jumped all the way to 49,000 you'd go oh now it's too big 252 so make it a little bit bigger 49500 gets my 250 so this makes the modify excel makes the modified divisor method really fast because you can just try different divisors all of your calculations are already programmed so it takes 2 seconds you know just to to try different divisors and excel just does redoes all the calculations now the only thing that's different in Adams or Webster's method would be this modified instead of using a lower quota in Adams you'd use an upper quota and you'd use the command round up and for Webster's you'd use the command just round so that's how you get those two and then Huntington Hill has um, a couple of commands that you'll need will be um, square root that's really the only new one you'll need to take the square root of something you type equals sqrt and then in, put in parentheses what you want to take the square root of all right quick that was our quick tutorial on jefferson's